Hey math thinkers out there, this is what's going to happen. I am going to be answering a few AP stats questions on vocabulary and terms. However, as I get each question or vocabulary term, I'm going to be eating a mozzarella stick with progressively hotter hot sauces. I'm not super looking forward to this. I think I'm gonna have a long night ahead of me, but it's for the sake of AP stats. We have six hot sauces here. The first one is uh, called a heartbeat hot sauce. Honestly, I've already uh, dipped my toes into this one a little bit. I'm, this one's gonna be fine. These five here are like, I haven't touched these at all. I have no idea what I'm getting into with these four here. This one, it'll be chill, we'll be fine. Especially up here, I'm not looking forward to this. You notice how the color tone changes here dramatically. Get a little more uh, Carolina Reaper black garlic. So I'm gonna be answering some AP stats questions and vocabulary terms while eating progressively hotter wings. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's do that and reveal them. We've got the heartbeat hot sauce, really looking forward to this. Just do a little, just do a little bit, yeah, just do a little bit. I'm going to. Go ahead. So can you explain to me the difference between categorical and quantitative data? Easy. Categorical data is a category. Something that you can't count or list in like a reasonable order. So a categorical set of data could be like eye color, could be music preference, quantitative, heights, IMDB score, weights, mile times, uh, the amount of food that Ramsey can eat in one minute. It's something that you can count. Categorical is something that can be put into a category. You can't list it in a reasonable order. Quantitative is something that you can put in order and it makes sense. Easy. I'm, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna be a little, I'm gonna do a little, a little toast. Mmm, I took a second dipping. <clears throat> now, we're getting into the Howler Monkey sauce. Howler Monkey Original. Our original hot sauce is a traditional Caribbean style hot sauce, unique to the country of Panama. The heat and flavor will liven up just about any dish, hopefully mozzarella spiox. <laughs> you go. <laughs> I don't know if that's a lot or a little. We're gonna find out. Okay, identify the definition of the SOX acronym. S-O-C-S. SOX acronym. You use SOX when you are describing a single variable distribution. So SOX represents the shape, the center, the spread, and if there's any outliers. And also context. Make sure you describe the shape, the center, and the spread of the distribution. Shape! Is it normally distributed? Or is it skew right? Was it skew left? Center! What is the center about? What's the mean about? What's the median about? Spread! What's that standard deviation? What's the range? Outliers. You got your 1.5 rule. Context. Don't forget your context, you're gonna lose points. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good flavor. The heat is certainly lingering a little bit more than that. But yeah, it's runnier. If you didn't notice when I was pouring it, it's a lot runnier. <sighs> Not yet. What I don't like, I don't like the hot sauces that are like uh, smoky flavors. I don't like a lot. And I think these are going to be smoky. Got my jug of water here in case I need it, which I'm, I'm sure I will. All natural, son of zombie wing. Accidentally healthy, intentionally delicious. Hey, guess what the first ingredient is? Honey. Woo! My face getting red? Still facing that little wing monkey? Yeah, it's still kind of like tickling. It's still tickling, but I think that's gonna be a nice buffer for this next one. I don't know how much is a lot. That seems like a lot. As your taste buds acclimate Smoky! That, Smoky! Can you please interpret a Z-score for us? Z-score. <clears throat> Z-score is a number of standard deviations away from the mean. A Z-score is a number of standard deviations. A Z-score tells you the position of an observation within a set of data. Yeah, it's a number of standard deviations away from the mean. Careful, don't mix it up <clears throat> with a percent. A Z-score just tells you where you're at in the distribution. That wasn't bad, it is sweet. I also think I might've cheated because I put, when I ate it, it went like far back into my mouth and not like on my tongue. I'm not scared, you're scared. Like that does help the heat a little bit. We have the Bravado Spice Company Black Garlic Carolina Reaper Hot Sauce. 100% vegan, gluten-free. There is Carolina Reaper in this. It's smoky. It's like a sweet tang. It like smells like straight up tomatoes. Ooh. Okay, can you explain the 
explain how you interpret a residual plot. Yeah? Okay, there we go. I've been eating them the wrong. It's like one on the tongue. Residual plot. <clears throat> Residual plot. So you have your data. You have your data. It's going up. And then you got that line going straight through. So what, uh, what a residual plot does is it look, it plots all the values uh, and it makes the least squares regression line, the X axis. And you're going to look for any patterns in the residual plot. If you see a pattern funneling, any curvature, that means a linear model is not appropriate. If you see a pattern within your residual plot, that means that a linear model is not appropriate for that particular scatter plot. You don't want to see funneling, and you don't want to see, and you don't want to see, and you don't want to see curvies. You, you, you don't want to see curves or funneling in your residual plots. Make sure it's a random scatter. If it, there's a random scatter in your residual plot, a linear model is appropriate. How was that? Spicy, lingered, it's like a punch. Eat. But yeah, I think I'm. That was stupid. You know what I did when I, <coughs> when someone I ate, so that other little chunk that I just had had nothing on it. I must have like pushed some residual heat like, <laughs> I don't know how long we're supposed to like wait in between or do we just like go for it. <coughs> oh, so good. Here we go, the bomb. Beyond Insanity hot sauce. Ingredients, first one, habanero peppers. They aren't fooling around. The other ones had like the first ingredient was like honey. Joy. At least it's like a chunky sauce. Wow, okay, I've been worried about this for a long time. I mean, is that enough? All right, well that sinks in. What are the most six, most common Whoa! Population into groups, often based on location, called clusters, and then you select by choice, or is it? Huh? So what you do is take every population, we split it into clusters, and a cluster is... Oh, here you I got that. Simple random sampling, cluster sampling, stratified sampling, convenient sampling. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a bad. That's a bad way. Voluntary response. Mm -hmm. Systematic. <laughs> Systematic random sampling. So we did today. So <laughs> we did today on the computer for the United States. Oh, I got the hiccup. Woo! <laughs> so how did that uh, plot process go? Worse. Whoa. This was uh, plotted on a graph. Where did that hot sauce lie in comparison to the other three that you sampled before? Outlier. Doesn't fit the trend of the data. My tongue's on fire, like. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Yikes. <laughs> it's still there. The pro about maybe doing this right now is that the lingering <coughs> of that, I might not be able to tell the difference of like which one, you know. They're so sweet. Oh, I don't know what's good, like a runny hot sauce or a not runny hot sauce. This is exhausting. <laughs> yeah, you're a minute. Oh! Oh, well, we're in it. Two events are mutually exclusive if. They can't happen at the same time. Two events are independent if. One, knowing one event doesn't affect the outcome of the other. Binomial setting 
and random variable. Oh, okay, so a random variable is a number that's produced by some sort of random event. And a binomial setting, you gotta check your bins. You gotta check those bins, baby, when you got... So, okay, I don't know what happened again, but I just ate that and nothing happened. Is it right on your tongue? That's why I tried. I gotta be careful so I don't get the... Because <laughs> I... You know, we mix them. No, I'm not mixing them. No, you no. know. Yeah, because you want to go out Stop with it. Uh-uh. No. Your students want to see you no. go out with a bang. Stop it. Don't they? Stop it. Mr. French. Mr. All right, I did a little bit. Mr. French. Okay, what is bins? <laughs> bins for a binomial random setting. B. You want to make sure that there are two. There's only, uh, there's binary outcomes. So either success or failure, depending on how you define the event. I tend to be independent from each other. And there needs to be a certain number of trials that specify at the beginning. So for example, I'm looking at the number of heads that are, I'm looking at the number of heads that come up. If I flip a coin six times, six is the number of trials. S, the probability of success needs to be the same the entire time. You did it, good job. Double hot sauce left on that plate. Pop it. You know what that sound means? It's time for some more AP stats, baby! Here we go! Hit the...